is four trillion. That is the ten point something billion, the ten billion dollars mm. that the Buhari administration has, has has borrowed for critical infrastructure. If you calculate it at three o five, it's actually four trillion. All right, Mr. Kiamo, we we need to go into the the campaign documents now because so many so many promises. I, I, okay, I wanted we to. Have, we, we, no, we have to. We, uh, issue. Okay. we have to. We have to move on. Unfortunately. Okay. When you look at the, the, the next level document, one of the things that is glaringly absent for those who have been following the campaigns and the discussions is the issue of our, our strategies toward or promises toward restructuring. Uh, in this document, there's nothing in terms of uh, devolution. The only thing that is there uh, upon my assessment was essentially the, the promise to devolve into uh, community policing while keeping the federal structure by ensuring that funds go down to the, to the divisional police offices. Is that enough, given the fact that the opponent, your opponent in this election, uh, former Vice President Tiko Abubakar is basing his entire policy document essentially centrally around restructuring. If you also, we you know we had launched two documents yesterday, the next level document and the campaign manual. If you look at the campaign manual, we address the issue that there's no issue we left unattended to, and we called it the restructuring farce by the by the, by the, the opposition candidates. It's a farce because there is a clear procedure in the constitution for amending the constitution. Anything, anybody that tells you that restructuring is something that should be done outside amendment of the constitution is a lie. Look, restructuring is about devolution of power, it's about fiscal federalism, and about all of that. You cannot do that without amending the constitution. There's a strict procedure for it. And so anybody that comes and tells Nigerians that I want to restructure, I, you know, in the, in the first term, you know, I want to restructure Nigeria, in six months, in three months, in one year, Nigerians should know that that is the biggest lie that they are telling them right now. Because you know why? You need the concurrence of the third of the houses of assemblies of the states. No, we, to we, amend we, the we understand the in process, case, Mr. Kiamo, but I, the, 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 the issue being raised here is that there's not even an intention being signaled in your policy document. No, but and, and, we and, said and, so in the campaign manual that the president will not, has not said he will object to a constitutional amendment. He has not said so. He has, he, just, he has not only engaged in a deceitful nature to say, I want to restructure, when he knows he cannot. Restructure is six months. But you can see that even the ruling party, they set up a committee on restructuring. I hope you know that. Headed by Malam Nasser El Rufai. Yes. And has submitted this report back. The report just came back when this whole politicking and all that started. And of course, you won't, you won't expect that all of that will be attended to in the heat of politics. It was earlier this year they submitted the report. So that report is there between ruling... In other words, the ruling party has a focus let's, on let's, the in a document. Let's get into the issues of yes. administration now. Within, yes. within the document, there's, there are so many promises being made that within four years, they, uh, the policy document lists the projects that will be completed within the next four years Absolutely. that you're promising. Absolutely. Now, uh, what is not there is there is no indication as to how these projects will be funded. We don't know whether it's going to be the accumulation of debt. We don't know whether it's going to be PPP. We don't know whether it's going to be uh, regularly budgeted funds. How is it that you have uh, essentially suggestions that in education, for example, you, uh, your document is saying that 10 million schools will be renovated and made ICT capable uh, per year. So that's 40 million schools over the next four years. How can you afford these kinds of proposals and how are you going to fund it since it's not listed in the policy document? That's when there's a will, there is a way. You know, we are not magicians to know, for example, what would, the, what would be the price of crude oil tomorrow. We are not magicians, but we expect the prices to rise. But the point is that this government has shown a determination and a will to squeeze water out of stone. At the point when they started undertaking this very critical infrastructure across the country, which is rail, roads, and power, oil dropped to $28 per barrel. And at, a, at that very critical time, they undertook such critical projects across the country. So it shows that it's a government that is very prudent in the management of resources. So whether it is by very you know, prudent borrowing, or by you know budgetary provisions and of course normal you know uh, earnings from both oil and non-oil exports, they will find a way. And I will tell you this: 
it's important to have a plan on the table expecting resources to come. They say who, who fails to plan, who uh, you know, fails to plan, plans to fail. So we don't want to you know, fail to plan. Uh, there, there must be a plan on the table. So when money comes, you know exactly where to plough it into. Uh, okay, very, very, very quickly now. The, uh, I, I want to just note that I said 10 million schools. I meant 10,000 schools. So that's yes, 10, 40,000 schools over yes. the course of four years. Yes. Now, looking at some of the other uh, uh, assurances or promises that are being made here, uh, you've talked about, in, in this document, you've referred to uh, the, the completion of projects and essentially a graduation from the PIDF, the Presidential Infrastructure Absolutely. Development Fund, yeah. into a National Infrastructure Development Bank. Yeah. I want to know, in view of the issues that this administration has had with budget performance, I look at uh, the, the social investment program where this administration budgeted 500 billion naira yearly, but it was only releasing in cash 150 billion. Uh, when you've had these issues with budget performance, how do you uh, intend to carry out some of these promises when history shows that budget performance has not been great? Oh, but, well, you know that we have all performed higher than you know, any other you know, uh, government in the past. Because you can see that actual releases, for example, for infrastructure was, has been the highest. You're referring history. to capital and releases. Capital releases, not, budget, not budgetary provisions. Actual releases has been the highest so far. And then you had 2.7 trillion in 2016 and in 2017 budget, which is the highest in the history of this country. And you can you know that you know the the, the, the government has been performing close to about 30 percent in terms of you know capital expenditure. Now, if you ask how you know they, they are going to fund some of these projects, you know the PIDF why they brought it, the second Niger Bridge for instance, under the PID, is to ensure that that project does not stop. Because that is $650 you know, billion dollars, um, kept for that project under the PIDF. So the PIDF is not coming through the normal budgetary provisions. It's to ensure, it's a, it's a standard standing fund to ensure that projects like the Second Niger Bridge under the PIDF do not stop at all. That's the kind of priority they pay to that project. So for such projects, there will be no paucity of funds. Don't forget also we are expecting a lot of revenues to come from non-oil exports. Non-oil exports, for instance, in the first quarter of 2018, was one of the highest ever in the history of Nigeria, which was 577 billion. Very, uh, very quickly, Naira. let's look at some of these other things. Your, your, yes. your, your policy document is promising uh, 10 million, uh, uh, 10 million uh, skill acquisition uh, opportunities for 10 million Nigerians. That's vocational training. That's an extension of 9 million. Uh, that's in addition to the 9 million that you're promising to go up to 15 million for school feeding. School feeding these 15 are, million. These are, these are un really unfathomable numbers when you think about it. But now, we got up to 9.2 already. But, but, but when you're talking about f going, up to, you're going up to 15. I, I want to just yes. be clear here. Yes. You're going to go up by 6 million in the school feeding. Yes. You're going to go up 10 million in vocational training. You're going to go up from about 2.5 with the trader money, uh, uh, farmer money, and all in uh, uh, artisan no, money, no, you're getting up it wrong. to 10 million again. For the Empower, we are going one million extra. No, that's just, that's just Empower. But for the for the for the trader money, market money, and all of that, we are going up to from 2.3 to 10 million. That's right. That's what I'm saying. And then we are also we are also expecting the money bank, the people money bank, also. So the for 10 million, that's why this, that is, be this, 10 is, million. this is the crux of my yes, point. Yes. Where is this money coming from? The money has always been there. The problem has always been the looting of our resources, surgery. The money has always been there. This, this administration has shown the uncanny ability to manage the very little resources to achieve so much. It's a mad, it's, they are, I, at times I see the president and say these are magicians because we don't know how they do it. Because the, it is the, what has been the bane of Nigeria in the past has been the mismanagement, gross mismanagement, and looting of our resources. I'll give an example with borrowing. Uh, I'm sorry, there's, I'll give an example with borrowing. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. I have, okay. got to go, I have got to go to this next question. All right. I was able to really go through this document, and I was surprised that in view of, the, in recent years, the kinds of killings we've seen, the rapes, the, the thefts, so many things have gone on in terms of judicial manipulations of political processes and electoral cases, etc. that in your policy document, there is absolutely nothing on judicial reform. Nothing in the way of automation, nothing in the way of extra funding, nothing in the way of, 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 of sanitizing the judiciary. Why is it that this is not a priority? You are not you? looking at the second document, which is the campaign manual. There are two documents that were launched yesterday. 
We talked about judicial reforms there. And the, I'm talking about the next, the next level. level. That's next what I'm level, talking about. Next level in judicial reforms is there. In the next document. So you have to look at the two documents. There's a no, campaign uh, manual. It, it is, now, it, I'll tell you. Tell let me, me what it is. Because I, I didn't, it's not manual, there. In the campaign manual, we talked about one, continuing strict application of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act to speed up trials. And this is, these are the convictions you are seeing right now the convictions of ex-governors and all that. It has never happened like this before in past administration. It's because of the strict application of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. And then they also talked about in that, in that document about making sure that, um, for example, the other six of the president is strictly you know, uh, enforced. So it's, it's sorry, in fairness, what you're saying is yeah. you're referring to some of the status quo options that are already on the table. But no, no, in terms no, of improving news, it. Improving that it. is not in the next level document, sir. But no, um, it is a part of the next level. There's a next level chapter in the uh, campaign manual. Unfortunately, sir, we have run out of time. Yes. Clearly, it is going to be necessary for us to bring you back to go sector by sector in terms of what you're offering Nigerians so, over the course of the So you can the see that the achievements years. are so much now that there's no time to even enumerate Well, them. those are they're your so words, much. not mine. I'm talking about <laughs> promises. You're talking about achievements, sir. Yeah. But thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. I have been speaking with the Director of Strategic Communications for the Muhammadu Buhari Presidential Campaign Organization, Mr. Festus. Kayamo. At this junction, we'll take a short break. We will be back in a moment. Our viewers, please do stay with us.